The Manhattan Project. Hello, wise and West students. It's time to prepare for tomorrow's debate. You'll want to take these brief notes from this mini-lecture to set up all the background information you'll need for the debate. The Manhattan Project. The race to build the atomic bomb began with information discovered from Einstein, Seisland, and Wigner. These Jewish scientists had fled to the United States from Europe, and when they arrived, they wrote a letter to President Roosevelt warning him that Germany was working on a nuclear weapon. FDR and Churchill were concerned that Germany would produce an atomic bomb before the Allies, and thus have a major advantage in the war. In 1942, the Manhattan Project was set up under the command of Leslie Groves to beat the Germans and make an atomic bomb for the Allies first. Three research and production facilities were created, one in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, to work on produced uranium, one in Hanford, Washington, to work on produced plutonium, and one in Los Alamos, New Mexico, as an assembly site for the bombs. J. Robert Oppenheimer oversaw the actual assembly of the bombs in Los Alamos. The top secret Manhattan Project employed 120 hundred thousand Americans and cost $2 billion. When President Roosevelt died on April 12, 1945, Harry S. Truman became president and was briefed about the Manhattan Project, its progress and goal of creating an atomic bomb. Germany surrendered on May 8, 1945, while fighting the Pacific continued. The secret word is insurgent. The secret word is insurgent. Three bombs were created in the Manhattan Project. The first one was tested in the desert, New Mexico, on July 16, 1945. This was called the Trinity Test. The bomb exploded with energy equivalent to 20 kilotons of TNT. It left a crater of radioactive glass in the desert 10 feet deep and 1,100 feet wide. At detonation, the surrounding mountains were lit brighter than daytime for one or two seconds. The heat was hotter than an oven at base camp, and a shock wave was felt 100 miles away. The mushroom cloud reached 7.5 miles in height. After the test, 70 scientists signed a letter opposed to using the atomic bomb based on moral grounds. On July 26, 1945, the United States demanded Japan's unconditional surrender. The Japanese wanted to keep the emperor, and this became a sticking point in the negotiations. The U.S. warned that Japan would face prompt and utter destruction if they chose not to surrender, but did not elaborate. The question now is whether or not we should use the atomic bomb on Japan to force that surrender. April 12, 1945. Word comes from Warm Springs, Georgia, that President Roosevelt suddenly dies from a brain hemorrhage. The nation mourns its beloved leader. Harry Truman has been vice president for 82 days. In that time, he met with FDR twice. He has no knowledge of the atomic bomb. Two outspoken cabinet members with knowledge of the bomb have conflicting opinions. Henry L. Stimson, Secretary of War, fears negative public opinion and dire irreversible consequences, suggests staging a demonstration. Within four months, we shall in all probability have completed the most terrible weapon ever known in human history. One bomb of which can destroy a whole city. The world, in its present state of moral advance, would eventually be at the mercy of such a weapon. In other words, modern civilization might be completely destroyed. Politically savvy, Secretary of State James F. Burns is pro-bomb. He believes a demonstration would considerably weaken our hand. He fears the Soviet Union's emergence, while keeping one eye on the upcoming general elections. A test shot is arranged on the grounds of the Alamogordo test site, 120 miles south of Los Alamos. The place is called Journey of Death. Its code name is Trinity. It's a dry run to test and calibrate instruments with radioactive slugs spiked in amongst 100 tons of high explosives. This is the largest chemical explosion ever deliberately detonated. The test is a success.